Hi folks, uh, Don Chamberlain here, Great Wave Engineering. Uh, for some time now I've been getting quite a few questions uh, regarding the uh, effect on pH of the Ultiman versus the Mini or, or basically any of the media that has uh, trace elements in them versus those that don't. Um, so the manufacturer uh, had always maintained that the uh, media was pretty basically inert, which makes sense. The only thing that would really affect pH, in my opinion, would be some sort of carbonate uh, rock, uh, basically sedimentary type rock uh, that would have some calcium carbonate in them, uh, which in fact is pretty soluble in water and leaches out fairly readily and is, is an excellent uh, buffering agent, uh, which would absorb some of the uh, acid if you had a, a low pH, uh, relatively low 7 seven, a little bit above seven maybe, uh, or if you were looking for something even lower, uh, it would definitely buffer that. Uh, but the, uh, the biohome media is, is made from silica sand, which in silica is, uh, is essentially in, from quartz and uh, really doesn't contain any carbonate. Uh, so therefore I didn't really think it was going to have any effect. But uh, anyway, there's uh, evidently some noise out on the internet somewhere that indicates that all those minerals that are baked into the uh, the Ultimate and um, uh, the Maxi and the Maxi Marine and the Ultimate Marine and so forth uh, are somehow going to leach out and, and, uh, and cause a problem if you're looking for a lower pH. So uh, after listening to a number of these questions, uh, I decided, well, let me see if I can do some testing. Uh, and so, as luck would have it, I've been trying to, since I lost my source of uh, uh, pond grew uh, peat balls uh, a while back, I've been looking for a, a new solution for peat. And so I've been testing some peat uh, for quite a while. And hopefully, uh, if this stuff ever gives up, I've been testing this quite a while, and so far it just keeps on chugging, which is good news, obviously, if you're looking for something to lower your pH. Uh, so sometime in the future, once this test ever uh, ends, if it does, uh, I'll do another video on that. But I'll just give you kind of a sneak peek of what, uh, what I'm doing here. Um, for testing purposes, I created uh, some peat balls, uh, 500 grams of peat, uh, and uh, put it into roughly two liters of, uh, of water. Uh, my water here has been testing at 7.8 consistently. so. Uh, it goes in at 7.8 and then at some point later on, uh, it's right now I'm testing it about once a week, uh, I'll test it again to see if in fact the peat has uh, brought that pH down and as I indicated so far it has. Uh, and I just got through testing it again today uh, and uh, sure enough it's at 6.0 again today. Uh, this is the test results I just uh, just uh, received from this uh, test, and it's been going on now since uh, December, I see. So that's a pretty good deal, I think. Uh, so I'm fairly pumped about this. Now, some people have uh, commented on uh, peat of this type that it discolors the water, and that's true. It's, uh, it's humic acid. That's what the, sort of the active ingredient, if you will, in peat is. Uh, and it, it tends to make your water a little brown. However, keep in mind, this is only two liters and actually a little less. Uh, if I put any more of that in there, I would uh, overflow my container. Um, so maybe one and a half liters. Uh, so yeah, it browns up pretty nicely just sitting in there. Uh, but uh, I think in your tank, it would probably, uh, it may show some discoloration. Uh, but hopefully wouldn't be uh, too objectionable. Anyway, we'll get into that in the future. The reason I'm talking about it at all is this gives me a low pH water to test, and that's what I used as the, uh, the test water to start my testing uh, with, the, uh, with the two types of uh, media, that is the Ultimate and the Mini. So I'll, uh, I'll dump this and uh, and we'll get into into those results here in just a second. Okay, so we've just finished testing these two samples. This sample is uh, the sample that had the mini added to it, 100 grams of mini. Uh, 
back on the 18th of April. So we'll look at the uh, ultimate test results first. So we started that a week earlier. Uh, again, as I mentioned, basically what I did was dump the uh, water from my, uh, my peat test uh, which had a pH of uh, 6.3 and a KH of 21, which was uh, considerably higher than all the other results for some reason. Uh, we rinsed uh, 100 grams of the ultimate uh, with a high pressure spray and then uh, added that to the approximately two liters of, uh, of low pH water. And then a week later we came back and uh, repeated the test and sure enough the pH had gone up a bit. Uh, the KH had dropped though, that was interesting. Uh, those things don't really compute in my mind, but perhaps somebody with more uh, knowledge of water chemistry can explain that. Um, and then the next week it uh, went up again and the KH went down again, and so forth and so on, until finally we got stable uh, here early uh, in May. Uh, the KH became stable and the pH became stable. After three weeks of that I uh, stopped testing. Uh, so those were the results there, and so you could say, well, see there, yeah, the pH sure went up, uh, way up. I wouldn't want to go from 6.3 to 8.1, and I guess I don't blame you, but you got to understand or remember that this was just in static water. There was nothing else going on in there. Uh, the, uh, in your tank, the activity of the uh, nitrification is going to tend to lower the pH uh, a bit, and obviously you've got much more water. Uh, and then, uh, thankfully, I had the presence of mind after running this for about a week that uh, uh, while, the, while the pH was going up, I wondered what would happen if we didn't have any media in the water at all. So I started a control test, and we'll look at that in just a second. Uh, so anyway, that's what happened with the ultimate, and like I say, you could conclude from that that yes, in fact, it does raise the pH. Uh, however, uh, the thing that is more interesting to me is it appeared to lower the cage. Now I don't know any reason why in the world it would, uh, but uh, at least it isn't raising the cage. In other words, it's not adding carbonate or buffer into the water, and therefore I don't think it would really have any appreciable effect on your pH. Uh, so let's look at what happened with the mini. So a week later I had another batch of uh, peat water uh, with the same pH, and uh, this time the KH was considerably lower, and again, I have no uh, explanation of why that is. Um, but after a week, again, we had a moderate uh, pH rise uh, with, the, uh, with the mini, which sort of uh, kind of at least blows the theory that they uh, operate differently. Uh, they both seem to raise the pH about the same amount. Um, and uh, and uh, the KH was again dropped, but only one point. So if we look at that on this test, the KH was roughly the same. Uh, I would I would uh, consider that one point either way, sort of experimental error. I uh, wouldn't get very concerned about it and call that essentially stable the whole, the whole time. Uh, and then again, we see that the uh, the pH got up to 7.9, which is again a little less. Than the ultimate, so if you're a stickler for numbers, you might say, "Well, see there, it doesn't doesn't raise it as much." But once again, in my mind, uh, two points, even though I realize that's a uh, uh, logarithmic scale. Uh, in my mind, that's uh, that's not uh, very great. Um, so I would consider those results to be uh, essentially identical. Um, once again, people with a uh, better understanding of water chemistry might disagree and might have, I'm hoping, perhaps some comments to this uh, that would add to our, uh, add to all of our knowledge. So let's look at what happened with the control. So once again, a week later, I had another batch of, uh, of water and, and started the control uh, test. And uh, so the pH was uh, a tenth of a point higher in that, uh, that example. Uh, the KH stayed stable, completely stable, which is what you'd sort of hope since they can't imagine anything in there. Um, and, uh, but the interesting thing, and, and this is why I'm really glad I thought of this, is you can see that the pH rose roughly the same amount with nothing in it. So that, again, goes back to my argument that the, uh, the biohome really isn't doing anything to your water. I'm not sure what is. Uh, again, if somebody could explain why the pH goes up on uh, just a static tub of water, 
Uh, I'm sure there's a, a good explanation for that. Uh, if I was a, a better chemistry student, I could probably explain it, but I can't. But anyway, I'm, I'm reasonably confident now that I've seen these results with my own eyes and my own testing that uh, there is really no significant difference between the ultimate and the, uh, and the mini. And in fact, the, the biohome uh, media is just as inert as I had been told. So anyways, hopefully this will help uh, put a little light on some of the, uh, the argument here that I think is basically just based on people's opinions. They look at that and see minerals in there and immediately uh, think that uh, minerals are going to do something to your water. Uh, the minerals are baked into the media and they're there to support the uh, bacteria not to do anything to your water. And it kind of looks to me like uh, that's pretty true. So anyways, hopefully that's helpful to everybody. I certainly welcome any uh, comments. And uh, hopefully I look forward to getting uh, some results on this pH testing, or on uh, peak testing done here in the next uh, few weeks or months. We'll see how long it lasts. Uh, but I'm encouraged by how long it's lasted so far. So until then, happy uh, fish keeping.